Lazzy's head, and there he goes. Abyss gonna clean him up. Olaf goes down. Everyone's just gonna line up here for Lazzy. He's gonna find himself the Quadra. I give it to him. Penta kill. Grizzly with the quad feet gets the ace. Available just spin to win all over. That game was insane. Welcome back, Saints Nation. We're about to get underway with game number two, where St. Clair, of course, after a very dominating game number one, looking to keep the ball rolling here. And coming in real quick with these uh, bands, uh, St. Clair having uh, the blue side now as uh, Bing Hampton is going to take the red. They're going to keep the same three bands in that Riven, Skarner, and Yone, which uh, as Zeddy said in that coach's corner, that seems to be their one trick champion. So, really uh, showing that they're those on those one tricks. So, having them to dig into their pools and do something with it. But it's going to be the Renekta first pick. And on a side, Bing Hampton, they did ban off the Olaf, Nunu, and Anivia, not allowing Act Force to get on his two signature picks there. And Frez not on the bird today. I love how they pick the Renekton, but normally you think, okay, they're just picking their top laner, but now that's just threatening Black Armor, menacingly just sitting there. The Gator ready to strike in the mid lane, too. Now, first pick on the side of the Hampton going to be that Kai'Sa. And to be honest, Darkness, uh, Darkness Jackson didn't necessarily have himself a bad game last game. Just everybody else snowballed around him. So... We'll see if you can try something different this time. By with the Nautilus pickup here for Shamui. Yeah, pretty good uh, bot lane setup there. Having Nautilus to set up those uh, anchors and uh, the depth charge for Kaisa to just alt in there and get in the back line. Um, solid bot lane. And with the Renekton pick, I would think that it's most likely going to go in that top lane this time because last they last uh, last time they picked it for that mid lane counter pick and actually going to be the Ezreal coming in for the first time this season for Lazi. It's been a while since we've seen Ezreal, but slowly making his way back up that ladder in uh, win rates. With Ez, you basically know what you're getting. Just constantly skill shots over and over and over again. I feel like he's never been bad, but Ooh. there's definitely times where he's better than, than certain situations. So we're going to see Lassie again. I don't know what it is about the last month or so, but he's been really trying to play some more AD carries and not just strictly uh, like Kai'Sa and then Jin. So mm -hmm. nice to see something a little bit different coming out here. And it's going to be Mianzfo on the best bodyguard NA. We do have Braum coming up to play. Yeah, it's going to be followed by the Rek'Sai in the jungle there for Metal Hydra. Not one you'd expect to see, but the Trundle not working out exactly in their favor. Uh, in terms of team fight, so he's gonna try something new with another more hard engage. See if he can pull out some more ganks this time. Uh, that Brom, yeah, coming in, it's definitely way better for um, with a long pair uh, paired alongside this Ezreal as uh, Ezreal's E counts as an auto attack, so he can just auto E and Q, and he gets already three procs up. So yeah. real fast procs on the passive for Brom and. Kane taken away from Active Forest, one of those stable picks that he's had in uh, the season so far. It's going to be Yasuo taken off the board, which is a very surprising ban for uh, St. Clair to go against Black Armored since they did do really well, but if they're banning the Yasuo, it seems to me that they are going to send that Renekton top lane rather than mid. Mm -hmm. That is a little interesting to say the least, considering like... Ayasuo was, like I was saying before, he wasn't really a threat at all in that last game, so wondering why that's worth a ban nowadays, but we'll have to see one more ban coming up for St. Clair, just going to be the standard Galio ban, nothing really too crazy coming out that time by. And now we're going to have to see what Black Armored ends up doing here, because he will be able to counterpick Frez this time by, being on the red mm -hmm. side. Yeah, it's going to be the Camille coming out into that Renekton. Uh, as I was correct, yesterday it is the Renekton that wins those matchups into Camille. Um, Ari being hovered, I don't believe it's going to be the blind pick. One thing I'd like to know is that they did ban the Sejuani as well, so I believe this will be Active Force picking a brand new jungler for the first time. They really banned Usually, them hard, yeah. Yeah, they banned four jungle picks. Really scared of this. It's going to be the 
Kha'Zix Yo. actually coming in for Active Force. St. Clair just kind of playing with their food here, just going for that full-on damage dive-in comp with the Ezreal, Renekton, and Kaisa. And we'll have to see what Frez wants to even out this team comp. Yeah, what can he pick here that's kind of divey? Do we see Fizz come out to play? I feel like that would fit I in. I would not be surprised. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if it's going to be a Fizz. But it's actually going to be the victor for that. Safe. Uh, yeah, it's a safer pick for that burst. Um, a safe pick definitely into a blind mid lane matchup. But let's see what Black Armand has in response. I feel like it's going to be something along the lines of um, an Orianna possibly or something that can match his range and damage output and has some utility along it. But we'll have to see in the next few seconds. It's going to be the Aurelia actually. Yeah, clock taken down. It's going to be the Aurelia for Black Armored into Victor. Very interesting. Not a matchup you usually see actually, uh, in that mid lane. Aurelia mid. Haven't seen that in a good little while, but can definitely be deadly in the right hands. We'll have to see how Black Armored ends up piloting this one. And I'm definitely going to be looking forward to picking the brain of a coach for this composition because this. Uh, this mm. setup, this just dive in and go setup is going to be brawly, it's going to be exciting, but it's also going to be somewhat execution heavy, I feel like. So, very curious to see the mindset in regards to picking a composition like this, which they've not necessarily mm. done so far in the past, but at the same time, their junglers have never been this banned out in a long time. Yeah, and for the Aurelia pick, I've actually I actually really like the Aurelia pick to be honest. It may not be that good into Victor. I'm not 100 percent sure on the matchup uh, win percentage, but Aurelia as a champ right now is doing really uh, well in win condition and uh, pick rate, especially for the top lane. She's been kind of shredding through basically everyone. That's meta. You have Gangplank, Jace, uh, even Orn and such people like that. She just shreds through those top laners and. I would, I'm definitely going to uh, love to hear what Zeddy has to say about the mid lane matchup. Yeah, we're still going to quickly talk about uh, it amongst themselves first. So in the meantime, let's take a look at some of these compositions just a little bit more. So I'm kind of curious as to why, if Camille loses the Renekton matchup, why do we constantly see people pick Camille into Renekton? This is still mm -hmm. a little mind-boggling to me. Like, you're willingly putting yourself in a bad matchup? Like Why? Yeah, with the Renekton Camille, it's you have that winning lane in Renekton, but uh, Camille just as a champ, if she can survive it without inting too hard, she with the massive amount of true damage uh, she comes through with her second round of her Q, it's just insane um, with a Camille and her team fight. So if if uh, Exile can survive against Kubra's um, Renekton and has that Rek'Sai constantly ganking and pressuring him, it'll be really good to, for Exile to stay ahead of him. And it did take a moment, but we do have the League of Legends coach, Shadi, is on the line here. Can you hear us, Shadi? Sure. All right, let's hop back into it. Coach's Corner once again here with Shadi. So let's take a look. Um, so since when did you decide to take an Overwatch dive comp and put it into League? <laughs> uh, actually, with this comp, we wanted to try something a little different. Uh, we've been wanting to play some more carry-oriented junglers. Uh, we haven't really had the opportunity to do that this season, but based off of how Game 1 went, we figured, you know, what what better way to try it than today? Um, game 1 was probably our most dominant performance of the season. Um, mm -hmm. So we wanted Kha'Zix to try. It's a really strong pick. It's It does a lot of burst damage. It has really good follow-up um, on a lot of our crowd control, especially on our side lanes. Uh, so I think I think with the right execution, we can probably get some good uh, river skirmishes and translate that into an early lead. Yeah, and I just want to uh, follow up with a question. Um, so you buy, you're gonna be buying a lousy dinner after this? Uh, again, <laughs> three, uh, three pentakills. Every, it seems like you have a pentakill every single game now. So, uh, I think this is number four this season so far. Um, we've had three in matches and one in scrims. Uh, Curtis mm -hmm. almost had one as well for himself, actually. Kubra three. It yeah. was really close right at the end there. We were really hoping and praying, but the flash E didn't execute. Uh, it would have been nice to get double pentas in one game, but uh, what can we do? Yeah, really good overall good performance from the guys so far uh, today, and uh, I'm hoping game two won't be any different. Yeah, like I'm just curious again, like how does like one go for the change in strategy here? Like we did see 
Act of Force. Like I'm looking at some of the bands right here on the side of uh, Squad. There's like five jungle bands. Is that just mm -hmm. what triggered? It's like, okay, all of our junglers are gone, so let's just try something like Assassinate. Is that kind of what happened there? Uh, or was there something additional? I mean, so the way that drafting typically works, at least at this level, is when you know that a role is contested or that there's only a certain number of viable champions for that role, if you don't lock that champion or a champion for, to fill that role in the first phase, chances are you're going to get a lot of bans on that role moving into the second phase because it's an attempt to pinch the jungle pool. Um, so you'll see that a lot with roles like jungle and AD carry where there's only really a number of viable champions um, in the current metagame. Uh, where you'll get double or even triple bands on the same roll. Um, the reason we uh, held off on the jungle pick, we were thinking about running another tank, um, but we didn't want to play another tank into the trundle just because we were a little worried about how uh, that matchup would work. Like we got kind of lucky with how we played game one. Uh, we just really we did a good job of avoiding it, um, but we wanted to try something a little different this time, anyways, to avoid that. Uh, so going into the carry, uh, we had some more options into the second phase. Like there were a number of champs we could have picked up. We were looking at Lilia, we were looking at Elise, we were looking at Echo. Uh, but we settled on Kha'Zix because it was something we've been talking about a lot in teams, and uh, uh, we just felt it fit with what we were trying to do. That works, that works. Matt got one more by chance? Yeah, just definitely a, a very all-in heavy comp with uh, the Kha'Zix. I'm definitely excited to see how that works out, and I'm excited, I, I want to get your opinion on the uh, that mid lane matchup with the blind victor into the surprise Aurelia pick from what it seemed like. Uh, we knew the Aurelia was coming. Like We knew it was an option. This guy plays mostly melee mids, and once we ban out the TF and Galio, he really doesn't have a whole lot of a pool left, aside from his melee AD mids. Uh, and we actually, the, leading the Aurelia open was kind of a bait, because as you notice, this game and last game, all three of their carry rolls are filled by attack damage champions. They have no true source of AP. Um, so they're really lacking a lot of damage typing into our relatively tanky comp. We're running Braum for Nectum. That's two pretty tanky champions that can stack a lot of armor. Uh, and if you saw last game when they were trying to hit Kubra, they literally did no damage to him. He had two armor items and they couldn't touch him um, because they went a full AD comp. Uh, so they've kind of put themselves into the same position here uh, by picking up the Aurelia. And the Victor doesn't have the worst lane into Aurelia. Uh, into Aurelia. You can use the Gravitation Field to kind of self-heal. Um, your Q is a really good way of trading at level 1 when you have the ranged advantage. Uh, so there are ways to play the lane. It's one of those lanes that you win more through wave management than by attempting to solo kill. Uh, and I I put my trust in Andre to uh, play the game that way. I think I have to look forward to see how this ends up happening. Game 1, or not Game 1, Game 2 is just about to get underway. So thank you once again, Zeddy, for hopping in and sharing your insight. And we'll either see if there's a Game 3 or congrats on the victory. <laughs> well, uh... We'll, we'll take the congratulations for now. We'll, I'll, I'll double check <laughs> about if anything goes wrong. But I'm feeling pretty good about this game. All Thanks right. I'll, I'll hold you to it. And here we are starting things off, of course. We're going to have a nice, quiet opener with no invades in the slightest. Metal Hydra, of course, have got blue. And then red for Act of Force this time by. And everyone makes their lanes just nice and quiet. And off we go. Yeah, very... Quiet star as usual. As you can see in the beginning, they're um, being Hampton stacking up on that um, pixel brush outside of ooh, the hook just going wide there. Uh, yeah, the being Hampton was stacking up inside that pixel brush outside the wolves camp, but uh, Saint Clair not usually the type of team to go for invade. So going for that five stack uh, quickly, but getting that level two both evenly and. Uh, oh my! Shamui is taking a lot of damage. Just we ignite taken down. It's gonna be the stack on onto. This is double. This Jax is just a double kill actually. Just giving to Lottie. Oh. Wow. Two minutes and thirty seconds of the game. It's gonna be Shamui and Darkness Jax just losing the lane instantly. Absolutely brutal there. And to be honest, that's so surprising. Darkness Jax and Shamui, like they didn't necessarily like go even in their lane last time. But I wasn't the like I wouldn't say that they would have. Uh, like been the cause to their downfall in that last game. But that's definitely not what you want to see. They dive in, because I think they got level two first, but Lassie and Mansfield were literally right around the corner. They got their, their yeah. abilities at the same time, and they inadvertently kind of baited themselves a little bit. And that's definitely painful to see. We got the Sheen already for Lassie. He is going to be absolutely chunking fools. And Mansfield is going to be hard to get through as well. And just going to be an absolute setup monster as well. Yeah, and with that uh, that Sheen Lazi's buying, 
He's actually not going for the typical Sunder pick for um, the Ezreal. He's most likely going to build that into an Essence Reaver followed by a Dust Blade. So going for that really heavy, heavy, uh, basically assassination Ezreal that's just going to one-shot them in lane. And it was really unfortunate for the side of being Hampton there. They hit that level two, but they just weren't paying attention, I don't think, to how many minions Lazi had. And there was one minion that they killed right as they engaged that. So they both hit level two. They hit with, put that uh, Braum shield up and just tanked out all the damage. And Shimui just got completely shredded, 100, 100 oh, yeah. to zero, essentially. Yeah, had the right idea, but the timing was just absolutely off there for uh, Shamui and Darkness Jax. Meanwhile, up in the top lane, Exile is going to be able to at least play with Frez here for at least a moment. Does have Metal Hydra nearby, but not going to opt to make any sort of play. You see both junglers actually making their way towards either the Scuttler area or towards mid lane, with uh, Black Armored actually trying to make the move onto Frez here. Flash away, and it's going to be Frez staying safe. Sure, blows his flash, but at least he's a okay. And actually, Mansfo is already roaming. So yeah, it was a good. Uh, ooh, Exile doing a lot of damage here to Kubra and that uh, punish for the extended trade. And they're gonna find me uh, Metal Hydra in the jungle there, burning his flash. It's gonna be a flashless mid laner and jungler in the end. No deaths yet for uh, the side of the mid lane. And other thing too, of course, Metal Hydra's Rek'Sai. Like, yes, you can, you have the tunnel to use as a bit of an engage, but other than that, you're basically going to be uh, just running at the opponents to try and engage, yeah. which is kind of similar to what I was just talking about on uh, Thursday. It's like, sure, once you get that one item that lets you have that, like a free dash, basically. I can't remember what it's mm -hmm. called, but until you get that, you're basically a sitting duck. So having no flash yeah, right Gale now from Metal Force Hydra is brutal. Yeah, you get the Gale Force where he sees. Uh, most likely, he will be rotating to the Prowler's Claw. As you can see, he bought that Dirk on uh, Metal Hydra. So he's going to get that Prowler's Claw to get a bit more uh, engaged there. But it's going to be the first strike going over to St. Clair once again, the first minute of it spawn in. But the bot lane uh, in Lazi Mansfield having that sh uh, complete push, they're just going to take it for free. And the Kha'Zix doing really well right now. Uh, uh, one camp up over Metal Hydra and Cooper looking for a little punish here, but not getting much out of it. Yeah, might need a little bit of extra assistance up in this top lane in regards to trying to get a kill, unless Exile decides to go a little bit too crazy. But at the same time, though, Cooper is at least in the lead ever so slightly in regards to uh, the levels, but Exile is just constantly winning these trades and. I don't know how he's going to try and bait this out, but the Rex of Middle Hydra is around the corner, but it looks like Cooper not going to fall for anything. Yeah, Cooper seems not having the best time in his lane. Uh, Exile going for that uh, Sheen for that little extra physical damage on his Q procs. But Cooper is probably just going to look for a reset as the lane's slowly getting frozen on him. He doesn't necessarily have a ward in that tri bush, but he is kind of like playing around the wall, just trying to peek, see if anybody's coming through the river or not. Is he allowed to go up and farm up, or is, does he have to run for the hills? But right now, all nice and quiet now, up in that top lane, with the exception of Exile. And now, we do see Hack to Force down towards the jungle of uh, Metal Hydra, possibly towards that blue buff area. I was thinking he was going to make a trip down into the bot lane, but looks like just maybe finding a crab and moving forward. Yeah, it's kind of hard with that to engage on that with uh, the Braum only being level four and Cooper actually popping the ulti here to go in, but still in the end losing that trade to the true damage of the Camille Q. Like I was saying in that champ select, just if he a is he able to uh, find that way in, he's just gonna do massive amounts of damage and really good in exile to be able to win this matchup for uh, basically having a hard uh, start in the first game. And lastly, just poking this Binghamton University squad just constantly over and over again. Even Mansfield throwing a snowball at him. But it's over and over again. Even going to be using the True Shot Barrage. They just want to shove this wave as fast as possible. Go back and probably uh, get some items. Push their, uh, their gold leader item advantage that much further. Rice has to be careful. Oh, this is a dive. Yeah, it's looking like a dive here. It's going straight into Relia. Instantly flashes. And it's going to be the 
Void, the Void ulti coming one? out, but it's going to be a one for one, yeah. Okay. But, uh, a, bit, a bit of a, a risky dive there. Um, the Relia instantly tanking the aggro uh, after Metal Hydra lost it through his ulti, but Act Force pressuring him in his jungle here and is going to be able to take away the wraps as Braum rotates up from bot lane. Yeah, so oh, yeah. At, least, at least there for Frez was able to get that one for one. If there's anything that's absolutely fantastic about uh, Victor's stun, it takes up so much space that, yeah, as soon as uh, I think it was Black Armor dove in, it's like, okay, you're right mm -hmm. in the middle of this thing. You might get me, but you're not going anywhere. And the tower is your friend in that situation. So at least yeah. not going to go go negative and, oh, oh God, no, exile. exile. Oh, you Act wanted to have a little bit too much fun. Around. But actually, yeah, you're exactly right. Metal Hydra going to find that one. Yeah, so not long for this world either. Okay, Metal Hydra finds himself a double. Yeah, I, I don't think they were... Uh, Exile was... The Exile definitely wasn't expecting the Braum on top of him there. But uh, having to bring the Flash and both Act Force and Miyasso going over the wall just weren't expecting she, uh, Shimui to be there with the Nautilus and Aurelia on top of it. So... Definitely a good punish from the side of being Hampton uh, for the overextension in, in the red jungle there. Like, I feel like sometimes you just see that blast cone. It's like, oh, wouldn't it be fun just to hit it? And then, at least there for Exile, was not a mistake, just a happy accident. Who would have thought that would have turned into a proper engage? Especially with the uh, oh, oh, no. there. Please, Metal Hydra. Okay. Didn't know if he's going to take the Herald there, and I took... That's going to be a 10-minute Herald going through the side of... Bing Hampton. I believe that's the first objective in the entire series, uh, with towers included, but Metal Hydra uh -oh. walking straight into Active Forest, not being able to see him in the ulti, or his uh, W, my mistake, by being burrowed. And it's going to be Active Force getting engaged on by Shamui. The Camille coming around the corner. It's going to be just Active Force just going down instantly. Exile getting the kill. All right, some missed pa miss pathways, a few missed... Uh engages and saints maybe overextending themselves a little bit after having a fantastic game number one and it's really allowed for the captain squad to at least take the lead oh. early here shamui he wants to get aggressive he's gonna get the root onto frez hook right on afterwards and nice. that is a massive stun lock but actually gonna force the ult onto frez and there's a flash gone alt gone they can definitely re-get uh go for a re-engage at some point down the line and actually uh, infernal drake is here on the board as well i'm sure metal hydra is going to start setting up for that that was honestly a very perfect engage from shamui he hex flashes over the wall and then saves his hook until black armor is in range and Mansfield kind of fighting out with shamui the hook connecting it's gonna be metal hydra possibly over this wall but uh darkness jack's just way too low from lazi's poke and this is most likely going to be Infernal Drag going to the side of St. Clair once again. It's not going to go easy, however. There is, of course, Metal Hydra still right around the corner. Shamui looking to go. There was a true shot barrage from bot lane that did go right across Darkness. And fortunately there for uh, Behampton for Metal Hydra, that is going to be the Dragon going over to St. Clair. And they did not decide to push the go button at the right time. And it's going to go back into the pocket of St. Clair. Yeah, and one thing I want to point out from earlier about that top fight, uh, a lot of people may be confused as to why um, Metal Hydra didn't see Active Force on the Blast Cone recalling there for so long. It's because when your bird actually going to have to stop, oh, Shimumi just barely missing, but I think they're going to co commit to this. It's going to be Fred's going down, getting a huge uh, gravitational field here, but uh, Shimumi tanking all the damage, so really good uh, engage from Shimui, just completing all these rotates on the Nautilus. And he's been absolutely everywhere, and it's really been just that extra little factor in all of these fights, that extra little root, that extra hook, and just extra holding. And even in that last uh, that last gank, sure, like the stun hit everybody once again from Frez, but it was Shamui tanking it. That's the, that's the person you want tanking it, so perfect timing here as we see Lassie and Mjensfo really trying to push her luck here. Again, this overzealous play coming out from St. Clair. I mean, yes, they won game one decisively, but that was massively due to a misfortunate draft on the side of Bing Hampton. But now that it's something oh, maybe a little bit more no. standard, it could be rough. Mjensfo and Lassie getting jumped on, Metal Hydra nearly getting taken down. Uber is here for backup, had that exchange continued. 
but it is going to go maybe the health advantage over to St. Clair, but nothing else really lost unless they push this turret, which it should be able to do. There's one additional turret plate in the pocket of St. Clair. And Saints are keeping this close, even though they're maybe getting a little bit trigger happy. Yeah, definitely. I think it was a bit of an overplay for Cooper to TP down. Most mm -hmm. likely thought this team was going to get one shot. Uh, but this may be oh. Act Force getting caught out by Exile. He's got a Hextech ultimate going down, but he went invisible, so he has no idea where he is. But the true damage coming through, just one shotting Act of Force. Not having a good game on this Kha'Zix. It is a night and day difference. I wanted to see a good matchup, and I think Ring Hampton is finally giving us it here this game in the lead by a, just under 2,000 at the 14 minute mark. Granted, still lots of game to go here but a lot of their their good members the key members really kind of getting themselves jump started at least in regards to either cs or kills the fact that metal hydra i mean the guy is a master's player that has to mean for something in regards to solo queue like if there's anything about solo queue that you are supposed to do it's you get your lead and you try to extend it yourself and giving that to a jungler who has the ability to make constant plays for everybody else and get them involved as well, that is uh, going to be deadly on the side of being Hampton if they can keep this up. Especially with Exile also being a threat as well. Yeah, and on the, for the uh, side of being Hampton, uh, uh, Camille for Exile, just getting ahead so uh, very, like almost silently, just picking off um, Active Force on both his kills. And like I was saying in that champ select, you let this Camille get ahead, it's most likely just going to jump in that back line and one-shot your Ezreal, no matter how much uh, fuel you have. Absolutely. That being said, though, that the one shining light here so far for this St. Clair composition is Lazi and Mjensfo for that bot lane duo. Lazi still puts on an absolute killer amount of damage. If he can just bob and weave alongside Mjensfo with his uh, bodyguard duty, they should be able to turn this around, and Ooh. as we see, Shamui gets himself rather aggressive, but you gotta watch out for Black Armored. That is gonna be the ultimate coming out from the Nautilus, but it's gonna just knock Ezreal up, and nothing's gonna happen. Darkness Jax getting low is going to go down, but that just let the Irelia pop off. Black Armored for the, I feel like the first or second, maybe the second or first time here in this game is actually gonna be the right side of the kill feed, and gonna get himself a double with that as well. Beautifully done. Yeah, and it was looking like a really bad... Oh, actually, you speak of this, it's going to be Frez getting jumped on Hot Hextech Ultimatum going down, get the stun lock on, but Metal Hydra just goes right through, and it's going to be oh. Frez burning the flash, thinking he can get out, but the Camille Q going in and finishing him off. Metal Hydra barely die almost dying to the tower shot. Okay, Saints just need to like slow down for a second and try to stop making some of these like, aggressive uh, plays. Try to farm yourself up a little bit, because... Make sure Lassie is going to be able to deal out a bunch of damage basically on par with Binghampton squad. However, there's like three or four members of the Binghampton squad that can absolutely pop him. He needs some beefier front lines. He needs some other threats here in this game. You picked a, a team of basically oh, no. all threats, and we do see Deathbush coming out here from, I believe that's the bot lane duo. Or, no, that's it's actually the, Black Armored and Shamui. Or Exilin. Uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I think it's Exile and uh, Shamui. They did rotate off, and they're going to, uh, I believe, just concede this drag. Well, Unless they Shinkler's going to try 5 for it. If they 5v5 this, I am definitely going to be clenching, if you know what I'm saying. Because this is going to be a rough one. No vision on the dragon either. They did a fantastic job of cleaning everything out. Granted, you do have the Ezreal, and if there's anybody who is good at 4 glory, like just randomly stealing a dragon or a baron, it is Ezreal's. The drag is a uh, drag now being started by Metal Hydra and Darkness. Irelia does not have her ulti up, which is huge, and Hextech Ultimatum is not up, so they have no way of getting onto this back line. Irelia is on the flank. I do don't believe she's on a ward, so they don't have an idea that she's behind them. They're going. Like they're getting risky, but it's going in. It's going to be a huge engage. Cooper is just getting shredded by Exile. The Irelia going in. The ulti coming up, but she's going to get shut down by Active Force. Active Force getting hit by the Exile's Hextech Ultimatum. Yes, we're going down as well. There's going to be Darkness taking a lot of damage, but... Uh, Victor taking him out, Metal Hydra is getting taken out, but Exile is finding himself a triple kill. Frez, does not, does he have enough damage to pull out, but it's just going to be the true damage coming in, possibly. Unless he can kite out Exile, it's going to be the, uh, oh, oh, the turret coming out. <laughs> yeah, the turret on the wrong side of the map, and 
turret taking him out, and Nexel is just going to find himself a free dragon here. I mean, Unless he's just going to take the reset. I don't think he'll be able to actually survive that. So, in all honesty, that wasn't terrible for St. Clair. Sure, it was the ace compared to the four. But you took away a bunch of shutdowns. A bunch of bounties. The Ezreal got a couple kills as well as... Uh, I believe Frey's got himself two here. And Active Force got a, mm -hmm. a shutdown bounty as well. So, it's able to at least boost him a little bit back into this game. So, when you're trying to spread out this... Uh, Spread out the amount of threats here on this team. That's definitely not a terrible fight for St. Clair. And this dragon is still a thing as well, so he could very well yeah. just do this again. But unfortunately, it's just Cooper's up top. Yeah, they're just gonna have to concede it. Oh my god! Almost, actually, this might coming down to 200 HP. Metal Hydra holding his finger there and getting it off. I for a second did see uh, purple and thought Active Force stole it, but was not able to and most likely will just be the one for nothing with Dry going over the side of Binghampton. Definitely appreciate the attempt, but not going to make true this time by while the rest of the Saints are in mid, mid lane. And it just seemed like Saints kind of forgot. It felt like they kind of forgot about the Dragon almost. Because if they all just like spawned up and just ran towards it, I feel like they could have stalled that out a little bit more. But... I guess Cooper did have his teleport and whatnot, but it still felt so that Dragon wasn't necessarily the focus. Yeah, it seems that they just they didn't have the utility up because uh, oh. St. Clair has such long ulties. I think, I believe they got it. No, they didn't. They reset, I believe. I think. Oh, that's that unfortunate. Just unfortunate. Yeah, it had like 2,000 HP and no smite to uh, get it low enough, but Baroness, Mouse Bond, and Toy Mass. But yeah, like I was saying, uh, St. Clair did have, have such long timers on all their ultis, so they kind of just had the two drags and they said, we're just gonna concede this one, get some pressure to this top side. But I don't think the same, uh, Act Force was on that same page. She was trying to uh, get the soul point for St. Clair, and in the end it was close. But Frez, if he's not careful, may get hooked. Mui. It it's looking has like he's to... just gonna shove it. Definitely has to realize that just because he's underneath a turret does not mean he's safe. Not against this composition. Because <laughs> like we've seen, even if you stun everybody underneath the turret, <laughs> the turret can only do so much for you. So Yeah, he, he did pick up the Hourglass and that Seeker's Arm Guard, so he's moving towards the Hourglass to keep himself alive once he gets uh, fully engaged on by anyone. So... Uh, good good stuff out of him. He does have the stopwatch, but the Aurelia looking huge now. Has a Steric's Gauge. Most likely going to be working towards either a Triforce or Gore Drinker uh, for her Mythic item. Yeah, and with Black Armored already doing a fantastic job in this game, getting that extra Mythic item would just be absolutely brutal. Dives on in like... During that last engage, or not the last engage, but the last big team fight, when I saw that Black Armored was on the flank, I was absolutely terrified there for Frez and then Lassie as well. Because, like you were saying, there was no ward on the on the bush that he was hiding in. Uh, as soon as that fight happened, I figured he was jumping on in. But thankfully, the Saints were able to turn and peel. And now they're going to have to turn and run. Black Armored charging on in. Lassie is going to get absolutely popped, and he's the main damage source. A nice last second shield, but not going to be the effect. And that's going to be the Rek'Sai ult coming in. Oh, no, it's not the Rek'Sai ult. That's a, that's a Darkness Jax. That's a Kai'Sa charging on in. And Baron is on the table after the bot lane duo goes down. Yeah, I saw I saw that uh, that Camille. I'm like, backup's here for St. Clair. But that's the, that's not your, that's the enemy team there. And Lazi just not having enough dashes to get away from um, Black Armor. Just having a really good game on his Aurelia. Yeah, it's going to be Baron going over 22 minutes in this game. Oh Axel no. Axel looking to get a bit <laughs> greedy here, but the gravitational field is going to stop him from going any further. Here, just to give it look... another... Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, if you look at Lodge's item, he did finish his Dust Blade and that Chain Sword to cut back on a little bit of that Life Steal. Okay. A little extra something to try and keep him in this. Mm hmm. Yeah, you may have one dash, that's not enough. Just wait. Uh, with the way champions are being made nowadays, there'll eventually be a champion that has like three different dashes all on their base kit with one ridiculous ultimate. Just you wait. It'll happen eventually. Maybe they'll build Gale Force into a champion. <laughs> Just uh, remake Ramus to be Sonic the Hedgehog. 
I mean, they are reworking him to have a, a knockup now. Yeah, they're... I don't know what patch. I think in a couple patches, his ult, his ultimate, he can he jumps in the air and someone's in the center of his ulti, he uh, knocks everyone up there. That's gonna be something to look for. That'll be interesting. I've not seen Rambus in too long, or in a long, long time rather. So maybe we'll see him get some play once again. Yeah, definitely may come back, but not out. Axo may get caught here. He did cancel his back and was spot on the Scryer's Bloom. He's just gonna go back and Cooper's just gonna leave him and it seems that side actually no they're not look like they were oh, gonna forfeit this drag. Yeah, it looked like they were gonna forfeit, but it's gonna be Cooper dashing in, not finding anything, but St. Clair's getting pinched right here by Black Armored. Lazi getting caught up by everything and he's just going down. Active Force following behind him. Kubra getting life stealing everything off with uh Miansko, but that's just going to be Black Armored in the back like taking out everyone. It's going to be a complete wipe for Brutal. Big Hampton University. That's just a ace on the side of them, along with Drake and most likely this bot tier tower. And the Saints team composition felt like it was supposed to be a dive composition. Meanwhile, Big Hampton countering dive with dive and just getting like multi-prong attacks from everywhere. It felt like a three, three, four prong strike. Nobody on the Saints were safe. And now getting Baron buffed on top of that, plus now their second dragon of the game. They are going to be absolutely melting these turrets. And this is almost looking like the complete reverse now. We see Bing Hampton here in the 20s in regards to eliminations. Saints are barely on the outside of the double digits, but really struggling here in game two. Yeah, Darkness getting a bit greedy there for the Wolves, but he's going to find himself just to scuttle and most likely take the reset to finish off that hurricane he's building. From going from being 0-2 to 5 and 3s, found himself a pretty steady uh, way back into this game. Exile definitely uh, having a, th a excellent game right now against St. Clair, being 7-0-8 on the Camille. Yeah, absolutely. So far, so good for him. Basically flawless. Still, it's a little bit to go, though. Still have a bunch of objectives on the board. The fact that St. Clair still have at least all their in inhibitor turrets is a little bit better compared to what Big Hampton was at this same time in Game 1. But with so much damage on this squad, as long as I feel like they don't trickle like one-on-one -on -one into a fight, that uh, Bing Hampton has no business losing a single fight moving forward in this game. You know, Coach Zeddy once taught me, if you have all three inhibs in this game, you do not have a chance of losing, so... They're still in. This is going to be a pick onto Exile, possibly. He did get the uh, Hextech Ultimatum onto Octoforce here, but I don't think he has enough damage to outplay three members. He gets stun locked, and it's going to be Lazy pick up a huge shutdown onto Exile here for the overextension. Great death push for St. Clair. That was good. They're going to lose their mid turret for however, but can they get back to stop anything at the inhibitor? But that's the kind of thing that Saints need to happen. It's picks where it's always just people trickling in. The Kubra might be throwing one aside as well. No, he's going to just uh, take some dice his way out of there. That's going to be another turret down. So, sure, they get the shutdown onto, from Exile. They get that gold on to Lazi, which is fantastic, but they're going to trade two turrets for it. Yeah, this has real. You want to keep him alive and... Uh, looking back on that last team fight they had in that river around drag, it was not uh, the spot you want to be as an Ezreal. You were a dead center between an Aurelia, Camille, and uh, Nautilus. So just getting completely CC locked with Active Force and just went down within the first like 0.5 seconds of that fight. It definitely feels bad, man, kind of moment. But now let's take a look. So Baron. Just under a minute ready to go. Two minutes for the next dragon. Gonna be another mountain dragon on the board. And somebody is getting soul point. We'll have to see how that one goes momentarily. And it's basically just a protect the lousy comp at this time as at this point it feels. How long is it gonna take for him to get popped? And we do see like you were saying, I think before the the Trifor is actually coming out here or black armored, so plenty of damage coming out from him as well now. That fantastic uh, turnaround compared to game one. Yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, work put back into Black Armor, finishing that Triforce, uh, giving him that movement speed and attack speed there. So 
Uh, when he stacks up all five of that Aurelia passive, he's gonna just be shredding through basically everyone on the side of St. Clair. And with drag spawning in the next uh, 90 seconds, or 70 seconds, I have stake, um, it's definitely gonna bring out another team fight. Uh, Activar is just finishing his death dance on the Kha'Zix compared to Metal Hydra who's on three items but it looks like they're actually opting to go for this Baron right away for the side of Binghampton. They're jumping right on it. Actiforce is walking that way but they have no idea this is happening. It's just going to be a Baron sneaked from the side of Binghampton. St. Clair's just too focused for this drag. Uh, it's going to be second Baron going over to Binghampton. Oh, it's going to be a similar situation to the last time too, unless they could burn this dragon instantly, but there's still 30 seconds. By the time that this dragon even spawns, if Saints all in the dragon, they still would be at the disadvantage because Binghampton would be right there, Baron buffed up and ready to go. And in fact, I kind of like this play. You know that you're going to be underpowered in regards to the Baron buff Ooh, as well. Find the Nautilus. And they're going to find him. Shamui is going to try and flash away, but it does not matter. Lazzy's going to find that one. But that's a massive knockup. It's going to be Metal Hydra. Doesn't necessarily have the biggest amount of damage, but the rest of the squad sure as hell does. We're going to see the battle over the top. Exile is going to take care of the support in the front line alongside Darkness. We still have the 3v4 currently in the favor of Binghampton. Lazzy is getting focused oh down, and God. that is some massive damage coming out of Darkness, Jax. This dragon is absolutely going over into the favor of Binghampton. Make that mountain dragon number three, and they could probably get themselves a little bit more and find themselves maybe a turret? How, how they want to do this, we'll have to see. Yeah, this is probably making Coach Zeddy uh, sweat a little bit there. Not first picking that Kaisa, seeing how much damage she's outputting right now, and even only being on three items, having um, that Q damage, just half HPing uh, uh, Lazi, just insane. There's definitely going to have to be an adjustment in pick and ban phase moving forward here. We do see Saints trying to defend here. Frez and Yanso doing their damnedest to try and keep this inhibitor alive. But that Baron Dove Super Minion might just take it down himself if they're not careful. In fact, I think it's just about yeah. going to since Metal Hydra does come in for a little bit of extra uh, reinforcements. Mid inhibitor down. They're now looking at the top side of things. We do see Black Armored also looking to maybe push that bot lane as well. Doesn't have teleport, but if anybody tries to challenge Black Armored at this point, they'll probably lose that fight. And it's going to be a hard yeah, time here for Saints. I don't think anyone can really 1v1 this Aurelia, not even Cooper here. He may be able to do some damage, but this tower is just taking so much damage from these uh, barren up minions that you can just sit there sitting by the cannon. He doesn't have much range, and yeah, his bot tower is just going to go down to that cannon minion. But huh? he does have reinforcements from. Uh, active Forest, and they're going to be taking Aurelia down to a lot, uh, pretty low. But he's coming back up, has a stopwatch, and they're actually yeah. just going to back out. They're not going to finish him off because they believe he's just going to one shot them when he comes out that zone. He's in the long range hook, finds Frez. Massive knockups coming in. Lazi left on the back line with the Camille. Lazi just getting one shot by Camille. And that's just going to be a white for the side of Bington, or, uh, Binghampton. Yeah, this. It's only up to. Ubra and Active Force to defend one tower. This one is done, I do believe. Nexus Towers are down. Active Force is going to be the final casualty. One more ace to finish off the game. We're going to game three in the series with both teams exchanging stupidly convincing games. Yeah, it's going to be, uh, we got ourselves a series here. Definitely fighting back. Uh, 30 kills on the side of uh, Binghampton, so. Basically, deja vu, but in reverse. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. But, oh, it looks like we're going to be seeing uh, Zeddy once again. It looks like Sad we're going to have to. Coach's curse. Yeah, this is why as soon as he said, like, oh, I'll, I'll take the victory. I'm like, okay, man, I know you're confident after game one. But... You're on the caster's desk. <laughs> hey, well, that's okay, though. You need somebody. Like, you, you need the confidence. But at the same time, it was definitely quite the turnaround there from this uh, Binghampton squad. Definitely did not expect this come out of them. They fought dive and dive and won considerably. So all these extra bands towards the jungler really forcing a different style out of Active Force and a different style out of the Saints. I always say, like, if you're up game one, you can, sure, you can try a new strategy. But that just fell flat. So Saints are going to have to yeah. go back to something maybe a little bit more traditional as we move over into game number three.
We're just going to be hopping into the lobby. Everyone's just getting all set up and good to go. So we're going to take five just to get back into gear as we wait for the finale between Binghampton University and St. Clair College.